Welcome to the one within all to another episode of Innerverse. Today we've got the hero of the heathens, Odin's own alchemist, Benjamin Balderson joining us. And we're going to see where the flow takes us. But Baldy's been doing some really good stuff over on his new Rockfin channel since we last had him here, including story time in the Norse mythology, connecting you to those characters and the processes in the alchemical creation that they represent. So I know he's always into some new things and we'll see where his mind's at today, but check him out on Rockfin because we both share that platform and what helps him helps me and vice versa. If you're not signed up for the premium content, it's a good time to do so. We got to connect the dots and make the tribe align. It's a time for gathering together. We've got to build the guild. Otherwise, we're just going to be hanging out to dry in the wind as the old systems that we've been dependent on crumble. <laughs> but the good the good thing is there's nothing to fear. The rate at which the collapse occurs is exactly the pace that we can come together. So it's all good and it's all time for that. And Benjamin's a nexus point for that convergence of our tribe. And I really appreciate him being here today. How's it going, man? Welcome back to Interverse. Love to soggy. Soggy, brother. <laughs> it's like that here too. Oh, you got you're getting smashed too, huh? Yeah, yeah we got uh we didn't get one bit of rain. Uh I don't think it rained from May all the way through till October end of October. Not one drop of rain hit us, not one time. And that's insane. Even this summer, it got to the point where uh I live right on the edge of the redwood forest. And redwoods survive off of fog. So as the fog moves in, that's the that's why the bark on redwoods is uh, porous, because it's actually uh, sucking in bark or sucking in fog through the bark and eating the fog. Um, so we always get morning fog. Like right now, uh, you look outside, you can see there's you know, can't hardly see the trees from here. Um, but uh, the fog disappeared. And we didn't have any fog this summer, and that was crazy. And now in the last, like, three or four or five days, uh, there was a two-day period where a water trough that I had that was about a 400-gallon trough was empty, and then it was overflowing about two days later. So, yeah, wow. I got to enjoy a lot of the beauty of the fog and the mist because I just drove from where I'm at in Missouri over to South Carolina for the Flattoberfest where we've got – a lot of mutual friends got together. I'm sure I heard your name sung in the praises while we were talking to the various people out there. That was a fun time, but it was really cool to just see the mist on the mountains. I felt like I was in a Tolkien story. So it's it's all yeah. very beautiful. For for me, it's always uh, uh, it always cracks me up because one of my very favorite movies is Thirteenth Warrior. It's uh, based off of Eaters of the Dead. Um, which is uh, loosely based off of uh, supposedly a, a recorded history of uh, some Arabs interactions with uh, heathens. And uh, one of the big things is, is the foggy morning and they, they end up going to war with this uh, ancient tribe of uh, cannibals. And in the morning when the mist would come in, that's when they would come in and it was the dragons would come in with the mist because they'd all come charging in in single file with torches. So they call it the fireworm. It was, it was super, super cool the fog of war yes yes <laughs> exactly um you In, bet yeah, and i wish i had been at flat flat Oberfest. i'm jealous uh if i hadn't been having to rebuild my lab which i'm just now finishing uh then uh i definitely wanted to be there something fierce i want to hear about that let's talk about that the rebuild like why the rebuild and because uh, i think you were on the old lab last time we talked and How's that going? Are there upgrades in this process? Is I'm assuming it's going to be better than ever, right? Yep, absolutely. We, uh, I definitely, you know, uh, so we had an old building and then I upgraded the pieces inside the building last spring um, because we're taking on so much work that, uh, and I'm doing so many experiments. Plus I needed to get down to a more negative to do some flash freezing, some of the things that I want to accomplish, I had to be at a severe negative temperature. Um, so I got some different equipment. Well, then uh, 
two months ago, maybe two and a half, something like that. Sometime during the growth season, cops came by. And even though uh, cannabis is legal in California, um, they're all about in Humboldt County anyways, they're all about snatching and, and smashing anybody that's not uh, an authorized grow, which just basically means that you've paid a ton of money to the state. Um, you know, between the licensing and all the different things that they make you do and the taxes that you pay, uh, they're just making sure they get every bit of wealth out of it that they can. That, classic you know, mafia. Make sure you don't get it. Right. Classic mafia. Um, so anybody that's growing, you know, and even small grows right now because the, the police lost their funding. But the EPA is claiming that these small grows apparently are damaging the waterways um, because, you know, we're up in the mountains. And so there's all these mountain streams. I've got a stream. I literally within 50 feet of both sides of my house, um, two different streams. Uh, uh, so they're saying that those are damaging those waterways. Of course, the big giant grows that are taxed and legal um, and are paying all that money. They have, they're, they're no problem. They can do what they want. But these little guys that are just trying to grow a few plants and trying to make a few bucks, the cops came in and just started smashing them. Now, I don't have any any cannabis plants growing. Um, so I didn't think nothing of it. When they came, I went and snatched. My wife noticed them outside the back window because we had the I had my grandsons here. And so she looked just out the back came window. into your property with no warning. Yeah. Yeah. And what? no warrant. And I and I don't even have cannabis plants. And then and then to make matters worse. So first, I just hide the grandsons and the dogs in the house because, you know, don't need no stupidity. I don't have no cannabis plants. I'm just going to sit here and listen to some shows um, and stay the hell away from all the crazy fucks with guns. Uh, so then all of a sudden I hear what sounds like a shotgun blast come from down where my cows are and where my lab is. And I'm like, what the hell? So, you know, and I've got a bull and he's he's pretty protective of his cows. Uh, so I don't even know what's going on. So I run down the hill and I get down there and I hear a smash or I, at first I just step out onto the porch and I sit there and I listen for a second and I hear so it sounds like a shotgun blast again. I mean, it's loud. So I go charging down the hill and them cops are taking a battering ram to my lap. I'm like, what, what the fuck are you people doing? Only I wasn't laughing and I was pissed, you know? And I started having it out with them. Well, first they were just real snotty to me. And this EPA lady, she's like, our job. And I was like, this isn't all one property. There's, there's maps on the county website. You know, you could distinctly see this is my property. Then there's a layer of trees. And then beyond that, there's a grow. What does that got to do with me? You know? And so then the EPA people all took off and went and hid. And the, they put a line of sheriffs in front of me and the sheriff started bullying me around. And then I had it out with the sheriffs and then they bullied me to the point where they told me they were going to lock me in the car until they were done for the rest of the afternoon. And it was screaming hot. So I was like, oh, hell no. You know, I'll fight with cops and I'll go stand up for things. But, they, you know, he just flat just said he's just going to lock me in the car to die like a dog. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to go up top. You know, this is, I do live on murder mountain shit, crazy shit happens up here. Um, so I, you know, and they're obviously already doing illegal things. They don't, they don't care. Uh, so yeah. And so I ended up tearing down the lab down there. Um, I can't have it. My, I, my property is actually two properties and on my lower property, all the, where I have my cows, all the pot grows are around that. On this upper property there, I just live across from two abandoned properties. So nobody's doing anything on them. They leave, a, you know, and there's not even a house or anything. They're just empty properties. Uh, so my upper property doesn't have that same proximity to grows. So I went and moved my lab up here just specifically for that. And and like you said, now because I'm, I moved it, I had moved all that equipment into an old building. Now I realize what I'm doing with that equipment and what needs to happen. So when I built the new building, I I'm appropriate, you know, appropriately making adjustments now that I'm there starting fresh. So everything sits in real nice and, and, and is going to work real well. Um, one of the biggest problems with that negative 40, uh, I I'm down to negative 40 with my work now. 
one of the biggest problems is that heat needs somewhere to go. Um, and they're an internal unit. So it kind of heats up the general area. And then that really is counterproductive to what I'm doing, trying to chill. So that's one of the things I'm trying to work on there. Um, we're, thinking about trying to work up to a there's a negative 80 external chiller that we can then pipe in and that would be really we'd be there then man i have so many questions (laughs) (laughs) of that story feel free i i guess because you know it is so so egregious that the order followers would come on to your property and just start wrecking stuff we have plenty of mutual friends and acquaintances that are really well-versed in the law or have their own connections to people that are really well-versed. Is that something you're going to pursue any kind of recompense for that violation? Because I mean, if you put the hurt on them a little bit, that might scare them off from having anything to do with you again. They mostly just want to bully people that don't have any teeth, right? Exactly. Which, you know, when I went down there and screamed at him, even though he threatened me, the cops did leave my property you know because i told him flat out i'm like it's not because he's like what are you doing down here and i'm like so you're down here smashing things on my property and he goes no we're not (laughs) and he goes you need arrested and i was like it's not illegal for me to say that you're doing illegal things you know so yeah that that immediately drove them off my property and actually my name had originally been on the raid list because the people in the helicopters can't tell property lines either and I, they posted that, did that illegally too. <laughs> Rather than come around and serve everybody, they went and if you go down my road and it's a nasty gravel road, about a mile, there's a gate and they just hung them, hung these uh, notices. notices on the gate and you're supposed to be served, actually served. That's not service. And they just hung them on the damn gate. Well, I happened to be going to town the day that it happened and I, I'm driving by this gate and I'm like, what the hell? And so I stop and I see my name on it. So I already called and chewed that guy out once. The 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 county dude that's in charge of all that crap. I already chewed his ass once. I'm like, I'm not growing weed up here. You guys need to quit fucking around. And uh you I put the schedule of fines them. on the uh, on the gate if you cross this oh, without permission. It's twenty thousand dollars a day. Twenty thousand dollars a day. Did yeah. you have that up already when they and they still came on? Well, I I I took and uh, I took and uh, like I said, I talked to their supervisor or whatever, so they took me off the raid list. Well, that and took me off of their BS. But then when they get here, cops cops are about as senseless as they come. You know, they're just thugs with guns, and they just go running through everything. They're like, "Oh, hush, me smash, me smash stuff." Yeah, you know, not a damn pot plant on that property, a goat pen, a goat, four cows, and me smash, me smash. <laughs> you yeah, know, freaking, it, it, it's insane. Um, you know, you look at police, uh, almost every cop that ever, they have the, they have the highest rate of, of uh, domestic violence in the world. Like, these people are just crazy. They only don't know how to deal with anything besides smashing people. When I was in the army for a drill sergeant, that's a special position. And you have to act pretty crazy like that, you know, as a drill sergeant and cops are acting fairly similar to that. Now, the funny thing about that in the army, you're only allowed to be a drill sergeant for two cycles. So you can do one group and do one group. And then you have to take an extended period where you don't be a drill sergeant anymore and have to go back into the normal world and interact with people normally again. Well, yeah, cops steam don't off. do that. Right, right. And, and remember that you shouldn't treat other humans like this. There are other humans. Just start interacting with them like people. Understood that in that drill sergeant position, that is something you need to do at that point in time in order to get an achieved result. But that's not how you should be. You need to let that out. And cops never do that. They just keep on that all the damn time. And and that's, you can't even possibly imagine how, like, I even understand where they're coming from, like a little bit, because if you were going around and they teach you, they've been drilled and trained to be scared of everybody and everybody's trying to fuck everybody and everybody's a criminal and blah, blah, blah. And could you imagine being that damn paranoid all the damn time? 
and then carrying a gun and, and weapons, you'd get violent and nasty too. There's two reactions, fight or flight. You either run away from it or you fight. And he's the dude that's armed. So he's going to fight all the time. Like yeah. he literally thinks he's in a fight with you. There's no training for them about how our rights really work. At best, they are no. maybe given the sense that our rights come from the legislators or the doc, the magical documents. But the reason why I wanted to stay on this topic is not just to be like cop bashing, right? Because they're still human beings, but you're right about everything you said that uh, <laughs> is like the craziest position to be in in the world, that type of order follower. And the karma falls on the ones carrying out the orders, not even the ones giving it or the ones making the, the unjust, I won't even call them laws, like ordinances and mandates, right? But this is something that's been coming up the last day or two that I've been feeling like expressing. So I'm glad that it's coming naturally to express here on the show is that our rights don't come from anything human or anything mundane. Whenever we say that they're God-given rights, it means literally, it's not a philosophical idea. It means that they, like, that is your right no matter what. And the universe and all of reality will respect that if you know it. And that, <laughs> yeah, that's like the real key is that no one has, you don't have to get anyone to enforce your rights for you or believe that you have those rights. Even if the order followers out there are acting all crazy and contrary, you know it and you exercise it. That is natural law will take its course. The law of karma and cause and effect will support you standing up for your rights, no matter what. And especially if you can do it following the law of, of love, which can be tricky whenever you're getting all that conflict and static. But if you can be like, not even look, if you can transcend, even looking at the order follower as the enemy, you might have to get, you might have to get uh, loud with them or forceful with them, but not like, I don't know. I think that there's a way, I think a lot of them, maybe cops are a bit of an exception, but especially when it comes to like just government agents in general, maybe working at the license office or somewhere where they tell you, you got to wear the diaper. Uh, a lot of them don't really want to do that. They're freaked out about the fact that they're going to lose their job if they don't get a cow poke and all of the above. And if you, we can just keep spread the message that our rights are intrinsic to who we are and we can only pretend that we don't have them. We can't even give them up if we tried that really will help us out of the situation that we're in right now. Yeah. Well, and, and understanding that the whole reason that, uh, as you said, talked about with karma, the whole reason that the, it wouldn't even or work out in a karmic equation is because if I tell you to slap yourself in the head and you do it, that's your own damn dumbass fault. I didn't really do anything. <laughs> um, and that's what we're getting out of these people is, is that, have, have I've never had a government official come and try and force me to do anything. You know, we're, we're now granted other people will try and force, you know, just because they're into their thing. But you know what? Peer pressure applies for everything. That's anytime anybody's doing something. We've all been had Jehovah's Witnesses knock on our door or, or you know, had a friend that offered us a drug or whatever. People do something. They want other people to join. They don't want to be the only one. So when they're especially self-destructive, right, right. Absolutely. So when they're, so when they're especially self-destructive and when uh, they're walking around with this mask on their face, they don't want to be the only one. Now they feel like a fucking idiot. It's much, it's much easier if they get as many people as they can. And this is just a mob mentality and it, it's a hard thing to go against that. But if you don't, you are still just slapping yourself in the face. I, I now granted there are, because I live extremely rurally. There are a couple stores now that I have to wear a mask because they absolutely will not check me out if I don't. And one of them is the feed store, which is just some PS because I can't get by without feed. Like legitimately I am SOL. Um, so that really makes me mad. But other than that, uh, and, and I immediately, I put it on as I'm in their threshold, I walk over, I buy my hay and my scratch and I check out and I leave and I take it off as I'm walking out the door. Like that's just BS, but I know they won't check me out and actually sell me anything. Um, so other than that, nobody's ever forced me. I can, I've not gotten injection. I, uh, last year when this was the hottest and heaviest and they were quarantining people and all that. I traveled to New York, um, met a bunch of people that you met at Flatoberfest even, 
and hung out with them, went and traveled to Philadelphia, went to House on the Rock, went to Niagara Falls. We have videos of Niagara Falls where they let us into all the attractions. We went to into the Cave of the Winds with no mask. Other people would walk up to us and take their mask off to talk to us like like apparently we wouldn't understand them without the mask. It is hard to understand them with their diaper on. It is. Well, my wife's hard of hearing. So she, she's looking at your lips while you're talking. And that's part of what she's the way she's understanding what you're saying. So she does. Um, But most people, they were pulling their mask down and we have videos of that. Uh, And nobody made us do anything. Yeah. I might be get kicked out of some stores. Like, if I, it, restaurants and things, I don't eat in restaurants anyways. That's a choice. And you are and the restaurant has a choice that it can choose to not let you in. That's fine. And you can choose not to give them business. It's it's only when like grocery stores and feed stores that does make me mad because now that's not really a convenience. I'm not going in to buy some frilly crap. I'm getting feed, you know, in groceries. And then California, when they just tried to make this mandate, um, they did try and the people stood up. But they tried to make a mandate where everything except for grocery stores and church, I think it was just grocery stores and church, you had to have the vaccine and prove it to go into any of them. And the people freaked out here. Uh, so that was good. Where but I live, again, there's like businesses are putting on their signs, let's go, Brandon, out on the street. <laughs> you know, it's like everywhere. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's hilarious. It, it's, it, and that's the funny thing. I'm not taking just my my uh, little area into account. So during the elections, one of the things I was driving back and forth across the country because I was actually moving and uh, I was actually seeing all these major cities and seeing all these areas. And like during the Hillary Clinton election and the Trump election, I was also happened to be moving. And I didn't see Hillary signs anywhere, literally during that entire election cycle. One time in a drugstore parking lot, I seen a Hillary Clinton sticker on the back. And that's of symbolic like where all the pharma stuff is coming from. <laughs> right. right. And exactly. Um, you know, so nobody wanted that in back when Hillary was running. Nobody wanted Biden. And I never I didn't see Biden yard signs who even. Chris Christie's sister is ultra liberal and she's a lesbian. She got married, um, call it, you know, all into the pharma. She's a nurse. So she is super liberal and they're, they're trying to harass me about, you know, voting. And I'm like, you know, cause I, cause I said, no, I didn't vote for Trump. What the hell do I look retarded? And they're like, well, would you have voted for Biden? And I'm like, uncle, uncle bad touch Biden. And this was during the Clinton cycle. So then they they both nodded their head like, yeah, fair, fair. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, like Biden, he's the best. Like you just admitted a few years ago how horrifying that dude is. Well, those same people horrifying. would have actually been he's like unelected. anti-Big Pharma he's before all this. He's numerous times. He's uh, the right. first prince of right. smell hair. That's what you can call him. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, like really. How, how come he bad? hasn't gotten cooties? He's all up in everybody's bubble space. Exactly, sniffing them like that's just weird. Tell me that that's not one of the weirdest things to not be able to control. I mean, we've all got like twitches and things that we do when we're nervous or whatever. You know, like I like to play with my beard hair. You know, it's like when you. Well, that's just nice. Have- yeah, that's just, that's your right, beard. Right. It's no one else's. <laughs> right, but we all have twitches now. When your twitch is smelling children. That is fucking weird. And how do you not control that on national TV? That how deep seated is that in you? Those that demons like, are really. That's your, he's under the control of some demons or shit. I don't know. Wow. He's a weird vessel of some kind. Yeah. So okay, well, let's pivot away from this because it's funny. But you know, probably we all know about this, and we can yeah. all relate to what we're talking about. And yeah, I mean. I I'm with you. I think voting, none, none of those people are my masters. So I'm not going to agree to the game of I vote, but whoever wins is my daddy. Like regardless. Yep. Yeah. I'm not playing that game. So I wanted to talk about, since you are doing a new series on Rockfin, and there's some stuff yep. that's you solo story time, ladling all the good gravy. And then you've done some interviews too, which I think is super cool or conversations, maybe whatever you want to call them. 
I wanted to have you catch us. Yeah, up. I don't know if I'm much of an interviewer. I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm so used to, I even said that to George. I'm like, I'm used to being you. So I'm not <laughs> sure how well I'm doing with this. <laughs> Honest conversation is what we're looking for. You know, it doesn't have to be this professional reporter, you know, like I think the old media the old cable news media, it was always about leaning on the expert, leaning on the guest and being like, Oh, here's the authority. Let them tell us what it is. But it's cool to have two people that stand in the authority of truth, having a conversation where it's free flowing. I mean, I mean, I consider myself an interviewer in the sense that I will take note of some questions and pop them out, but that's just natural being interested in who you're talking to. So yeah, I wanted to, here's my question. I wanted to see if you could maybe give us some, some recap on recent conversations you've had, what's been interesting on your new channel, who you've talked to, like, what do you think people would really get a lot out of uh, hearing about that you've been doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the best ones was the interviewer conversation. I was just in with George Weissman, which was just absolutely amazing. Um, the work that that gentleman is doing is just phenomenal. He is doing actual science that he proves and he's just super genuine and open about it. And uh, originally he was more on the free energy side of things. And, and the, that's one of the funny things is part of what uh, drew me to him and wanting to have him on the show is some of the work that he does. And I do cross. So when I'm looking at the world galvanic cell or even your body, your body's running off of uh, hydrogen and oxygen is your basic uh, things that are making all your transitions happen. Now, oxygen is going to go toward the uh, breaking apart state side. So that's going to be where things are like electrolysely breaking apart. And then the oxygen is carrying the carbon out all the time. Oxygen is taking our carbon out of your body consistently. Um, now, on the flip side, You've got the hydrogen reaction. So anytime you have an oxygenation, you have a charge. Anytime that that's, there's a release of that and that carbon molecule breaks out of whatever compound that it was in, there's a charge release. It's a small charge release compared to the fusion charge release, which we're, we were all taught that in school, that fission is a much lesser charge than a fusion charge, right? So when the fission we're looking at the breaking away where the oxygen is ripping this out. Well, then what happens is, is now there has to be a fusing and the fusion side is driven by hydrogen. So one of the things that he discovered and that he was doing is that uh, with this hydrogen, he's taken just a, making this Brown's gas, which is a charged hydrogen and the hydrogen then will ignite. Because just a tiny little bit of sulfur carries in that. So with the hydrogen driving it, what's happening is, is the hydrogen's making this transition easier. So basically, if you were trying to force your way through a wall, hydrogen is now opening a nice hole in that wall and you're able to just pass through. So he made these torches that, uh, and I have the torch. And you can melt even titanium at 270 degrees, which is less than a Bic lighter. And he said the the porcelain that they put on the outside Whoa. of the shuttle. Right. Right. Because yeah. what's happening is, is this hydrogen is making it so these electrons are going in and doing the job without all that heat loss, without all that exchange loss. It's opening up this wide path and them electrons are going in and instantly liquefying changing its state because now it's just electrons going in just boom before they had to break their way through freaking amazing right he said the uh, porcelain from the space shuttle it eats right through that like butter like, that's amazing that's insanity hydrogen number right. one on the periodic table all-time champion <laughs> yes exactly just a beast and so and you're 60 percent hydrogen you know, this is the driving reaction to most of your things in your body where you're getting your fusion reactions. I've well, done then, some hydrogenated water. Uh, mm -hmm. Like that's something I've done over the last couple of years. And I've noticed a good uh, muscle recovery with that in terms of like getting back into the gym faster and like soreness alleviating quicker from from lifting and heavy workouts. So that's just like one element. 
I'm sure that the applications for hydrogen in the body would be limitless because that's like the first primary building block, right? Exactly. You're like 60% hydrogen. That's you need a lot of it. And he's uh, he actually didn't believe the parts where it was applied to the body. He was so caught up in the uh, he, he started applying it to engines and making it so uh, gas engines, I believe he said was twice the efficiency, like three times the efficiency off a diesel engine, just running hydrogenation through the through the fuel. Um, and he was caught up in the free energy in the extra energy aspect. Well, people started talking to him about breathing the gas. He's like, dude, this gas is explosive. Don't breathe it, dummy. You know? Um, and then finally some German new medicine doctors, uh, started, uh, using it and they were doing it a lot and they weren't breathing it pure, you know, they're breathing it, you know, cut with oxygen. But they started having these just insane, amazing results and actual scientific results. And they got back to him and he's like, oh, wow. Wow. So he went and changed his mind and started doing it. Um, unfortunately, he lost his wife uh, and w didn't do the treatments with her and didn't come to this point until after. So he's very avid about helping people and trying to give this to the world. because He doesn't want anybody to go through the loss that... Uh, he suffered through the things that he watched his wife have to live through as she depleted. Um, so he's real, just a, a genuine, kind, fantastic dude. His name is George Weissman. Um, Eagle Research. Uh, is it .com or .net, honey? What was that? EagleResearch.com or .net? Uh, .com. I think, yeah, I think it's .com. Um, Good that you have the second brain there ready to access. Yes. Yes. Well, she's been studying all the, all the, uh, it's right there. Oh no, that's his YouTube. And she's been studying all the stuff and then she did some extra things. Let me see your hand. She did some extra thing. Cause she, she sliced her hand open too. And, uh, they have an attachment for hydrogenating that area. So we are experimenting with it and it's, it's fascinating because it didn't get that red, that super redness that you get around cuts where it turns that bright cherry red. And then the very outer edge turns white where the skin break was. She doesn't have that. And her skin's wanting to more mend back together rather than just kill off the dead, the spot and, you know, then shl you know, schluff it off, which is what your body normally does. It just seals it off and then just like resurrecting the dead cells instead of replacing them. Yeah, it really is. It's 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 fascinating to watch. Um, we've been breathing it for about three days, and uh, immediately I noticed I had more energy the next day, which I'm a fairly energetic guy. But in the morning, one of the things, because I flew off a motorcycle into a tree at uh, about 50, 55, 60, and cannonballed into a tree, How and it shattered ago? my left sight. Uh, four years ago, five years ago, five years ago. Um, so in the mornings, I'm pretty, especially it's getting toward winter time I and mean, we're getting a lot of temperature changes and shifts. Um, so I'm real bad sore in the morning and, and my left side wants to crumple in on itself and it don't like it. Um, so it takes me a little while I go out and do my morning chores, but then I kind of hover by the fireplace and, uh, watch videos or look stuff up or whatever. Um, and instead that next, the very next day I was out at like eight o'clock in the morning, just tooling around the farm, feeling just great, feeling loose, nice. Um, <laughs> Christy and I've been fighting a, a flu or something. We had a bunch of, we had some friends that recently got married and went to Vegas and traveled across and came over here. And now, and now we kind of got something. Um, Sometimes but, uh, I think it's really the, the nutritional change from traveling more than any like germ thing. Right. Because I've noticed like, I think this is just normal human thing that when we travel, we don't have access to the, what our absolutely. body's used to the, you know, the, the rhythms our body is used to and also the foods that we're used to. So, yeah, and that's super cool about yeah. the Brown's gas. I've heard it on crow and I think the higher side chats and it's good to hear from you, the confirmation that it's a good energy boost. The medicines of the future will be simple like that. And I mean, we're in the future now. We're already there. My thing that I can shamelessly plug all, all the time now because it's becoming such a big part of my life is 
tuning forks. If you're familiar with like Eileen Day yep. McCusick and her whole biofield tuning thing. Um, I've seen, really uh, good book I seen that you did some shows with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think she's, been with, yeah, 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 she's yeah, yeah. been with Crow too. Uh, electric body, electric health is her newest book. So it is taking the electric universe theory and applying that to our body and our auric field. And so, Fantastic. I mean, I'm having really good success with people, but what's cool is it works remotely. They can be, I just worked with a guy in Portugal earlier today and, nice. and it still nice. works. So like we nice. have a lot more power to, and it's all way simpler than it needed to be. I say it a bunch lately that it was the lie. It's the lie that's complicated. So we get the the lie of health and the lie of medicine. And it's like, I can't make sense of all this. It's so complicated. I need the expert. But the truth of these yep. things is always the simple, simple truth. And that's the beauty of yep. it and where we're going. And that our freedom through taking more personal responsibility is actually a lot less of a confusion than being lost to the authorities, right? Absolutely. But again, this is the, that's the age old uh, fight, you know, ever since Prometheus gave humans the fire free will, you know, the, the sulfur, the God element uh, that made us, you know, who we are instead of just clay golems. Ever since that was given to us, half of humanity wants to give it back. You know, they're with the rest of the gods. Hey, man, that was not ours. We we don't have the intelligence. We're not we're supposed to bow down to the gods. They're gods. We're just supposed to do, you know, and that's half of humanity has tried to give that back ever since. And we're just, again, at the precipice of that same fight over and over. Half of us are saying, no, you know, the, the, what the gods gave me, I, I, I'm going to make use of. And uh, there's a reason that I have this, you know, if, if it was really that much of a mistake, I guess they would have wiped us out and taken it back. So uh, I think what the archetypes want is not for us to give it back or to clutch it away from them and try to be in control of the reality. It's this dance where we are the vessel for these archetypal energies and for the gods. I mean, I have not haven't been having experiences lately where I feel like I'm talking to certain ones, especially Hermes slash Odin coming through and like showing me symbols in the external reality after I get the the download in my mind. And I think, was that you? And then I see the eights and I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> right. You right. Know? So like they're, on they're, the, it's a dance that we're on in with the Mercury them. path. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Nice. So it's that nice. balance between not being in control of the gods and the gods not being in control of you. And we like coke. We work together. We're co-conspirators. Well, well, and just to understand, you know, this is this is the epitome of what you know Odin did. Odin, he uh, took the Asir and the Vanir, and he merged the two. And this is why he's king of the gods, the All Father. He's not just one side or the other. And then even when you get deeper into the stories, Odin himself got along with the Jotun most of the time. Like his interactions with them, he yeah, he had some tricky and some funny interactions with them, and he did some shit. But like a lot of times he, he invited the king of the Jotuns to come hang out in uh, Bahala. He did things like that. He actually interacted with them as opposed to where the rest of the Asir, you know, mighty Thor. That's all Thor does is crush ice giants, you know, rah, 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 you know, uh, where Odin, he makes use of these things. Like he's that's the thing that Mercury does. Mercury doesn't pick a side. Mercury takes all the pieces that it wants, all the pieces that it needs. It's the amalgamator. Um, whenever when you're looking at alchemy, that's what you want to be is is the mercury. The mercury is what's making that transition happen. You understand that high side can't do anything. That fire is just going to burn itself out. That that crystal's not going to move. You need to through the mercury make that merging happen. And when you look throughout history, no matter what cosmology you're talking about, the Mercury character is always the most dynamic character. It doesn't matter which side you're looking from. And it, that character can be both the hero and the villain, because depending on which way you're looking at, whether you're looking at uh, if you're looking at a Galvanic transaction where things are where the the cell is breaking back down and going back to source the mercury is making that transition happen. So it's going from the, from the lesser to the higher. And then if you flip it around, 
then when you're looking at an electrolysis transaction, then the mercury is what's making the allowing the gold, the higher end to break down and go to the lower end to become the lower end. So this in that instance, mercury is like the Robin Hood. He's stealing from the gold and giving it to this side, taking some of the riches from over here and giving them over here. Um, so it's understanding those transactions. That's why that, that figure always never is a good figure or an evil figure and people have such a hard time really grasping that you know that it depending on the situation they're going to act situationally and that's mercury that that's the way to live right there you know i i i i, I admire thor and thor has his place and he's amazing but i would rather be the one that understands thor and his place and lets thor do thor's thing and makes the most use of that than be thor because I, I just can't be that one dimensional, you know, and that's the difference. All the other gods in the pantheons, whether it's the Egyptian, whether it's uh, uh, heathen, no matter what. And even when you look at Christian, the Christians don't, for some reason, realize this, but the angels are basically gods. And they, we, even as a heathen, Odin isn't the the original God, the creator of everything, the all. He's not, he even has a father, you know, like he's not the original. This we understand that they don't understand that, you know, uh, they just have a weird understanding. So they're worshiping angels, and those angels are gonna have usually uh they're either one or two dimensional, they're gonna have their positive side and their negative side, but they're they're not you can expect certain things. I can expect that Thor is going to destroy ice giants and then he's going to come and that his positive side is, is that, that, you know, unlocks things for this. He's going to party those too. Are the two things. <laughs> yeah. Those are the two things that Thor does. He doesn't do other things. I don't expect other things out of Thor. Um, and that applies to all the other gods, but Mercury, 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 you can, you don't, you can't expect anything out of Mercury. That's going to do what Mercury does. And that's, that's the place to be right there, baby. Like, uh, you know, that's the dynamic character. You can actually make movement. You're the one that's actually making the party happen. It, you might not be the shining one. You might not be the dark one, the two polar ends, uh, which are real easy to catch attention, but you are the actual life of the party. You're the one making it happen. You could that's shine or go dark, depending on what would most balance the Absolutely. situation, right? Yeah, you have the exactly. full range. That's like the, the idea of the age of Aquarius, the shift that is necessary for us to actually get out of freedom from freedom <laughs> and into the real freedom through responsibility, through being able to respond in the appropriate way to life as it presents us with information and with stimulus. And instead of being lost in a fictional story, and letting trying to make life or reality adhere to a fiction, then instead we tell we sing the story of what is to ourselves at all times and affirm it and live in that flow of life force energy as truth. So, right. So that I think for me, a big part of that is to get out of the good evil mentality. Not that there aren't absolutely good and evil actors in the world like a Thor, right? Uh, like that exists, but that we don't need to see anything that way rigidly. So the example I'm going to give is how in your cosmology that you express, I find it really interesting how the ice is masculine and the fire is feminine. And it makes perfect sense the way you describe it too. But on the physical plane, like in our bodies, it may be, oh, maybe you can give more uh, context to this. I've noticed that like, you know, okay, conceptually, I'm with you on that, totally. But uh, in our bodies, I've noticed just kind of obvious that the men are, they they run hotter. Like their physical bodies produce more heat, generate more heat. And the feminine is colder. They got cold hands, right? And there's there's Sometimes, biological reasons for that. Think about that. Think about that further. Sometimes women are cold. Sometimes they're hot. And sometimes, sometimes men cold. are cold. Sometimes very seldomly men are usually like you said they run one temperature it's stable men it, 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 it a dude usually at 70 degrees he either complains about it or he likes it he doesn't change his mind every day he's going to either complain about it or like it. at 68 
every day he's either going to like it or complain about it. It's the same because that dude has one temperature. My wife in a freaking 30 minute span will tell me she's hot. She's cold. She's hot. She's cold. She, I will watch her strip her clothes off sweating and then put her clothes back on. And, and I understand she's at that age where that kind of thing's starting to get out of control. Cause she's getting ready to make her changes. But, um, Women all their life, they do that. Women can't choose a temperature. They're the original kick the blanket on, kick it off, kick it on, kick it off, one leg in, one leg out. Like they, they, they are chaos all the time. Which is change and flux. And uh, that's part of right. necessary for the equation. I look at it like the, the yin yang is the perfect explanation of this, that one side is a mm-hmm. primarily one way, but there's the other side in it. Right. There's the light in yes. the dark and the dark in yes. the light. Just a, just a kernel, just a kernel. You bet. And that's where we get out of the duality paradigm that's been so <laughs> destructive and divisive is to begin to live on the line between the light and the dark. Right. Rather than overly polarize or identify all the time as one and the other. And when you start to go, OK, there's good and bad or there's positive and negative and then there's the negative and the positive and the positive in the negative that opens us up to a four elements instead of a two a duality and that's what has really helped me in flow state is to think about if i'm starting to kind of get out of flow or feel friction in my flow state well where am i at on the elements like what do i need more of or what do i have too much of do i need some water do i need some earth right mm-hmm. and that is i think key to the mastery that we can do alchemically spiritually to keep ourselves freely flowing like mercury does in that, in that state. Uh, so anyway, oh, maybe you got some right. riffs on hand, that. Hand me, hand me the uh, cell salt books, please. Thank you. So this is called the Zodiac and the salts of salvation. Um, my producer, Jared, gave this to me. So when you look at this, this is set out, and you can see a wheel. Yeah, this is the right? zodi- zodiacal man for people just listening. Yeah. And when you look at this, there's 12 months. But each of these months has a certain aspect or characteristic to it. So when you're looking at it, now, the fun, wonderful thing about this layout is then you can see where things are across from each other. <laughs> so you understand that uh, in your body, like let's take uh, selenium and magnesium. If you want your muscles to contract and grow, get stronger, you need selenium. If you want them to release and relax and recover, you need magnesium. The two are directly across from each other. So they also then are tied to each other. So if you have uh, overabundance of one, it'll cause you to have a lock of the other one. If you have a lack of one, it'll cause the other one to overwork, you know? So understanding that this is a balance between these two things, and you can look at one as positive and one as negative, and they are just simply by the way they're interacting, but that's just a description of an interaction. One of them's not good or bad. You need to feed both because you need your muscles to be able to relax and recover and to be able to tighten up and do work. You need to have both. Your heart needs to be able to pump. You know, if it's just constantly contracted, you die. If it's constantly loose, you die. <laughs> you need it to do both. So you need both these elements. You need that negative element to draw things, to create that pull. You need that positive to do that push. You need both things and they need to have an oscillating interaction. And I, I do love where you went with the uh, switching it up to four because um, it is because then what you're talking about is whenever you're looking at that transition, it's not truly po- polarized when you start actually looking at life. There's not just hot and cold. When I wake up in the morning, it's the room's nice and cold. And then an hour later, after I kick on the, fir- the wood heater, it's hot. There was it didn't that didn't happen just immediately. There was this transition in between, and that's the that gray area, the mercury spot where you're making these transitions between these things. That's where the life is and where you work with things. Um, and like in your yin yang example, it's beautiful because the, the mercury is the line that's in between the, the transition point. 
And we need both things, just like in a battery. Um, that's the talk that I've been given. The big one that I've been given is talking about the world as a battery. And when you look at that, the moon is the anode and the sun is the cathode. And while we can understand that the sun is like the, is the positive and we're receiving the power from that, the moon had to degrade and deteriorate had to oxidize in order which is a cold reaction in order to come over here and to get this fusion reaction over here um and impregnate this and then now that that's happened now this can release the energy out for the world so there's this entire cycle right through there that mimics the birth cycle mimics your life cycle and everything and when you are start understanding that that if the moon had not degraded had not done its dirty thing and fallen apart and oxidized that charge would not have been able to impregnate the positive sun side and that would have then been able to release this this radiant energy to us so all these are just a set of actions and interactions and the way it's working and yeah some of them are uh 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 more on the uh, dissolving side and one of them some of them are on the reducing side but when you start looking at it in chemical aspects instead of moral aspects you understand that reduction in the you know the breaking apart and the reduction are just two reactions and they're both equally needed in this whole exchange <laughs> there's so much to say about that process we'll probably get more into it in plus but in maybe the next like maybe a little less than 10 minutes in this first hour before we take our our little break i wanted to throw some ideas at you for your conversations that you're having on your rockfin channel i'm sure you got a lot already but people like as a fan of baldy i want to mm -hmm. see the uh i want to see the clive de carl benjamin balderson conversation because he provide you know clive de carl you know of him i don't Okay, I cool. Know, I, I, can, I know the name. I know I get the you name. connected with him through uh, through Please. his email. But he is just Please such do. an awesome dude teaching the gospel of the only thing that makes you ill and causes disease is nutritional deficiency, basically, or physical you know, physical mechanism problems. So he's got the best quality version of any supplements I've ever tried. Like I'm on his magnesium. I'm on his. Now uh, I know who you're C. talking about. Yeah, he's. I know who you're talking. I've not. I've not. I mean, I'm. I'm not horribly familiar with him. I'd love to have this conversation, but now I'm at least aware of who you're talking about. Ding ding the ding. Yeah, the reason <laughs> I want to see you talk to him is because you've got that whole astrochemical, physiological, chromatic chart thing. You know, you have a good understanding of that, and you can. He probably serves up most, if not all, of the elements that are in that chart, and you might even be able to give him some interesting pointers on why the things work on a more metaphysical or, you know, mechanical, zodiacal mechanical level, because I didn't realize right. that about the oppositional or a cooperative nature of selenium and magnesium. And I've been supplementing magnesium, but not selenium other than eating a lot of Brazil nuts, which is probably good enough, honestly. Right. Cause they contain right. selenium, but I would love to see that conversation. So just throwing that out there. I'll make a note. No, to, I, uh, I appreciate, highly appreciate it. Highly appreciate it, brother. I'm uh, the more sci scientific minds I can get in there and we can really figure this out and lay it out for the world. That's, that's the whole, that's the whole plan, right? <laughs> Give it to everybody. <laughs> We've all got different pieces of this and uh, you, you, yep. you dudes would have an awesome conversation. He's so cool. Love it. Yeah. Uh, then another guy I'd like to see you possibly talk to. Have you done much looking into Reich, like Wilhelm Reich? And yeah, Wilhelm work. Reich. Yeah, he's fantastic. So I have a friend named Mitch who has a website, theorgonedonor.com. And he's been for a, a long while now, but especially this year, on this amazing hustle to create. And I'm going to, I mean, you can take these notes, but I'm going to send you, I'm going to get you connected with these people off the air too. But I just want to see these Thank connections you. and I want to plug them in the middle of the show because they're both really good and everyone listening ought to know about them. But Mitch, the Orgone donor, he's been doing this project all year called Earth Pipes Across Arizona, where he's using these like copper, sometimes steel tubes that are layered with the metal and double terminated quartz crystal 
just like Reich's organ accumulators would be, but in mm-hmm. a, a pipe. And then he hits these into the ground around the cell towers and he's gifted, he calls it gifting that he's gifted literally thousands of these earth pipes across the state of Arizona and in other states too, but he's really been hitting Arizona to basically deal with the frequency fence that the towers are creating because all the geoengineering mm-hmm. in the spring they do, if it was just left into the open sky without the dissonant or deadly orgon radiation he's frequency, a, he's frequency. Empirically grounding. He's, exactly. he's grounding the ether. He's grounding the ether so that uh, whenever they spray, all that stuff just dissipates into a parts per billion nothingness in sure, the open it doesn't have sky. That, it doesn't have that. Uh, it doesn't have that. Uh, the grid, grid or that uh, static energy to hold it up. Exactly. So he's do, he's done that, and you can look oh, into this yourself. Nice. Arizona has had nice. the biggest monsoon season on record this year. It, the desert turned green all summer. Animals and insects that hadn't been seen in years or ever started coming back. Like in one well, that's, year, that's part of the stories I talk about too, because that's what people don't realize. It's funny because when you look at this world cycle in all the cosmologies, life just comes back up out of the mud, yeah. out of the sand. And then you look at things like that, because that's very interesting. Cause then Wilhelm Reich himself, uh, it wasn't in death Valley, but it was somewhere around uh, Tucson. Was he? It was like the second driest place in the world when he first tried his uh, cloud buster um, and did the cloud buster there and ended up causing uh, same, sim, you know, similar effects where he caused a monsoon. And they said that uh, I think it was like within like a week, he'd raised the humidity like 60 percent in the area. It was insane. And then a monsoon hit and like and just like you were just saying, life that actually people didn't even know had ever existed there because it hadn't been recorded just started sprouting and little critters you name it yeah that's what's happening right now in arizona this year and i even just did one of the towers by my house and this isn't like a proof or correlation but i've noticed that since i gifted that tower it's been almost all rain and storms <laughs> as the uh, as the the healing energy of the earth comes back in. Oh no, UPS man, my dog's going off. <laughs> so I'll mute for a minute. That's no problem. Um, well, and what people don't realize is again, with everything we were just talking about earlier, what is water? Hydrogen and oxygen. What are these two, what's driving these two greatest reactions that happen in organic life is hydrogen and oxygen. And so if we don't have a constant refreshing of that, then life just dies. Life ends. We constantly need that refreshing of the hydrogen and oxygen to be happening, to be making all these different exchanges throughout, you know, whether it's inside your blood, inside your gut, inside your lungs, it doesn't matter. It even with most people realize that they think, you know, glucose is what you live off of. It's not. You, your body then needs to oxycarbolate the, the glucose or decarbolate the glucose. There's a carbon molecule bound up in there. The oxygen rips it out. We get that energetic reaction. And now we can use that glu- that ATP because now it's called ATP rather than glucose. Um so whenever we're looking at life, we need that mercury element, that water, that uh, no matter what it level it is, with metal level, it's actual mercury. That's why mercury is used. But on the earth level, that's water is, is doing all the mercury type exchanges. It does fit because even when you, you know, <laughs> even the word getting hydrated, that's from hy- hydrogen, hydro, right? Yeah, that's yep. uh very, very important. So it's cool. This sort of a nice full circle for the first hour to get to that point. But we're wrapping up the first hour, Ben. What do you want to tell the people about how to connect with you and your work or support you? I can uh, contact you, any of the uh, above. Also closing thoughts for the free hour people that somehow aren't uh, badass enough to join us on Rockfin where you and I both are hosting great content. So what do you got for the free Absolutely. people to close us out? Well, I'm Benjamin Balderson. Uh, it's Odin's Alchemy, Benjamin Balderson's Odin's Alchemy on Rockfin and also on YouTube, like like Chance here. I'm not real big on doing much on YouTube. I put some experiments and such on there. But the fact is, is YouTube was never free. 
uh, you were always the, the price in YouTube. There, there's something to, there's, there's an exchange being made and that exchange came from you. And that's why it's hard for these guys like Rockfin and Odyssey and whatnot to compete with that. That had government help, a government approval, and they threw billions of dollars into that in order to make it function, in order to give it to you. So if you don't come over to places like Rockfin and whatnot, then you now we truly see why they built YouTube because YouTube has this ultimate control. It has this control of what the entire narrative is. It's amazing that we just watched the world flip out over uh, a big one was ivermectin where joe rogan said that he used ivermectin and cnn lost their shit and called it horse paste and everything else and it doesn't take much to look up that that won a 2015 nobel prize for human consumption and has been given to billions of people across the world but we look at this narrow narrative that they were able to maintain and understand that chance and i are going to get kicked off of youtube for trying to give any truth like that so if you're not willing to chip out a little bit in order to help maintain these platforms that are going to give you the actual truth well, then you might as well not even fucking try. Don't you cry get what about, you pay oh, for? It's not on YouTube. You get what you pay for, straight out, straight out. Yeah, and it may, yep. maybe Rockfin won't always be the thing either. It's just a matter of right. like we got to try something, and that's working for us really well. So we'd love to see you guys over there. Absolutely, where we can have reasonable, free conversations and be adults and actually talk. Um, and other than that, folks. That's just another example of where we need to stand today. If we want to have the world we want, we can't ask them for it. We can't complain like little kids that daddy didn't buy us the, the red Nikes. We wanted the black Nikes. That's all we're doing is we're, ta- we're living in their system and then complaining about how they run it. If you want a different system, Support a different system. Give a different system your support. That applies for everything. You don't like what the grocery stores are doing? Grow your own food. Start start supporting your neighbor who does grow his own food. Start taking your time to go do that. Then all of a sudden, Walmarts and them go under and you do get the things you want. That's that's life, guys. That's That's where we're at. It's time to choose. Boom. All right. Good place to wrap it up. We'll catch everyone over on hour two. Thanks, Ben. Always fun to contact you and talk to you, whether in a Facebook message or especially like this. Looking forward to what we get into second hour because it's a jam packed first one. Loving it. You betcha. Oh, we're going to we're going to go deep. Then we'll get more into the electric or into the galvanic universe, into the some of the real crazy things we're working on here. Crazy gravy. All right. I'm into it. See you guys over there. the one that I had no idea I've been waiting for since like 2017. Yeah, so that's about when I came into the idea of Cosmic Egg, World Tree being the same thing and that that explains why the Earth isn't the NASA model. Not that I'm saying I know what it is. Wait, maybe I should back up. Did you even hear the plus extension where we delineated a new electrical theory for the Norse mythos? and many other world cultures explanation of what the realm is being an egg or a tree or a tree inside of an egg or an orb with flat land in the middle. Right. So probably to this crowd, it's not completely out of left field that we're talking about these type of things. However, if it's a new subject to you, I promise we will find a way to make this content more accessible and start you more from the beginning Actually, I recommend a YouTube channel, Norbs World, N-O-R-B-Z World. You probably have to search for just that to get the YouTube channel that I'm talking about because you know how search results are on there. 
They like to hide people's stuff who they don't want you to know about and who they put disclaimers under their video. Hell, this video will probably get a disclaimer. <laughs> I don't even think we say the magic words, flat earth. Not like I believe in that as a religious belief. I don't believe, I just know what it's not. So I'm open to the idea that it's this. And since I know it's not that. Right, but if you didn't hear the plus extension, all you heard was the half where we talked about is lab getting attacked, some cooties conversation. You know, we're just getting warmed up. Some of the stuff he's been getting into on his new Rockfin channel, that is good stuff. Uh, that concept of the magic of hydrogen turned out to be really important in the second hour. And then he gave us some really nice astrochemical physiology ideas, and I gave him the organite gifting explanation. Thanks to our buddy Mitch, folk hero, Mitch, the orgone donor. Check out those episodes if you're new around here too. Really, really amazing work out there. Grounding the ether, as Ben put it, in the desert and turning Arizona green again pretty rapidly. So, right, that's the stuff we talked about in hour one. And if you liked it, obviously we vault out of that area into a much deeper end of the pool. Ben gave us more details and explanation of his galvanic electric universe theory, which it's not that he invented the electric universe theory. He just has a really good way of fleshing it out and using the Norse mythology to his advantage as an explanation of alchemy. And when you study these things, you realize it's all one process and all life is the same process happening in different reflections and different perspectives. Pretty amazing. Talked about the galvanic theory in terms of the metals that are associated with the wandering stars, AKA the planets planetary alignments as electrical motors <laughs> Ragnarok explained as uh, the recharging of the universal battery. God plugging in his iPhone <laughs> electrolysis though. This was an interesting topic. This is something I don't know a lot about. And we pondered maybe some explanations as to why the sun, some people remember it as yellow, but now it's more white. And we talked about so much in this plus extension guys you need to hear it if you're not on rockfin yet it's so worth it or patreon you can get it there too but we got into the difference between the great work and the great reset like maybe these things are happening at the same time for a reason uh pondered about why enlightened societies of our ancestors might have vanished from the earth completely and then i got into explaining some cosmic egg cosmology to ben which he would see as world tree, probably Yggdrasil. And at the end of all that, I think I converted him to believing that mud flood has merit, the idea, because obviously it does. If you've looked into it very deeply, it's like what it is, how it happened. That's what's up in the air, but clearly something happened. And I've recently come to conjecture that it has to do with the cosmic egg or that you can put it in the framework of universal world tree or cosmic egg. And when I explain this to him, I don't want to spoil it, guys, but he figured out how that fit into electric universe theory perfectly in with some trippy firsthand experience, scientific evidence to demonstrate mud flood in a smaller scale that he didn't even know that's what he was demonstrating. Anyway, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that's in the plus hour. Please listen to it. I'm only asking for a shekels from you. $10 on Rockfin isn't even all just for me. You get all the creators that are on there and it's just a growing list, including Ben Balderson with awesome content. Actually, I know for a fact that our mutual friend, Beth Martins just went on his Odin's alchemy show and they could only talk about 15 minutes of stuff on YouTube before they had to cut it to be just rock fin, just to get past the censors and talk about what they wanted to talk about. So, I mean, do you want to support the problem? I'm okay with you listening to me right now on YouTube if you are, but do you want to be part of the solution instead? Since we built this new cage that we've all been sitting in, the dead internet. <laughs> we need to get back to the living internet where it's the wild west again. So right, $10 a month on Rockfin, boom. You get all the plus content I make, extended shows. $5 a month on Patreon, even less. And you get all of my archives that even go further back than Rockfin, actually. The downside is you don't get to chill in the premieres because I can't stream to Patreon quite as easily and I don't care to. It'd be too many steps to add to the process. So. Rockfin's got its perks. Patreon's got its perks. A little cheaper on Patreon. Archive goes further into the past. Maybe you float between the two subscription models. One month on one, one month on another. I don't know. Just spitball on here. 
Uh, and yeah, I don't even care if you sign up to rock Ben through Ben's channel and give him the 10 bucks, do it. I don't care. I just want you supporting alternative media because I know you'll come over and watch this show. And I guess I get some kind of royalties for that because they actually count views over there. They're really helpful for indie creators. I don't mean to make this all about money, but practically speaking, we got to eat. <laughs> and this is not like zero work, what we do here. And Ben's into different things. I'm into different things. I'll go into that to let you know what else I do if you're new here somehow, which is great if you are. Love that. Uh, so I don't even care if you support Ben instead of me. The point is, I want you moving to the new thing. And if a better thing comes up than Rockfin, I'll let you know. I get it if you have gripes, but shouldn't we, don't we have more gripes about GooTube? Is that not apparent at this point? So do that, support one of us, get both of our content. It's amazing. And this plus extension is one of the best ever. And I didn't mean to put the very best stuff in there. It's just that this was an unplanned conversation. We just vibed and saw where it went and it took us to places we couldn't have planned because neither of us had made the connection yet. So that's Wu Wei because it's all new stuff in terms of topically for us anyway, in our crowd, unless you're following him elsewhere. And then it's new stuff that hasn't been talked about anywhere else because we had epiphanies and that's the real shit. The epiphany part. That's what I'm here for. Bringing you my epiphanies, <laughs> trying to multiply them. You know, you have your own. You don't need to believe the things I say. I just want to encourage different ways of thinking. Another thing that's really cool is that tonight is Halloween. And that's not the cool thing. But I was wondering what Ben's uh, sun sign is because I'm so into astrology lately. Go figure. And I hit up his wife, Christy, who's so cool. You actually heard him, you know, getting chocolate milk from her and stuff in the episode. <laughs> She's just right there ready to assist. And she told me that his birthday is November 1st. So wish him happy birthday. If you're listening to this on the day it comes out, maybe hit him up on Instagram and let him know happy birthday or barrage him with YouTube comments, something like that. Cause our Scorpio man is demonstrating the purity aspect of that part of the Zodiac. Just that raw purifying alchemical magic that he's one of the most interesting characters in the field. I regret saying best about anybody anytime I say it because it pedestalizes them and it degrades other people that do the same thing differently. But I mean, in my circle of people that I know, he's up there as one of the key leaders and teachers in the field of alchemy. And what makes it so much more accessible for me as somebody that's more deeply into symbolic literacy and speculative ideas rather than practical getting your hands dirty stuff that by bringing the alchemical process into the terminology of Norse mythology, which all of us know some about probably, and if not, it's an interesting topic to research and it is entertaining, entertaining and informative, right? Putting it in those terms makes it accessible and it's really cool. And I'd like to have a conversation with them about building your own system to do that same thing and just making sure you know alchemy or the hero's journey before you swap out what character goes where and create your own pantheon because maybe we have this type of talks on our telegram group all the time. Maybe that's the way into a non-dogmatic, truly free Aquarian age, taking radical responsibility for your own cosmology in order to decouple ourselves from the toxic elements that are so entrenched in the mindset that we've been molded with that we don't even recognize them. Maybe we just need a restart, <laughs> a great work instead of a great reset. Uh, yeah, listen to the plus extension to find out more about that. But tell Ben happy birthday. I got into a tangent. Scorpio is the purity or the toxicity. Depends on what you go for. We all have polarities with our awareness. Our sun sign is what we're aware of most in life and in ourself. Maybe like the main quest. And yeah, I just think it's cool to have a Scorpio alchemist. That's powerful. <laughs> bringing purity to his spagyrics big time. I love the guy. I feel like we already hit it off the last time in July when we started getting acquainted with each other, but now I feel like we're bros. We shared an experience. <laughs> that was a big experience. And now what else? Um, I do, if you're new around here or you just want a gentle reminder, I do provide sound healing sessions for people remotely and it works remotely. And if you find this universe theory being electric, fascinating, this electric universe theory, that was a weird 
<laughs> word mangle. <laughs> Why am I commenting on it? Why am I giving you the disclaimer? You understood me. So electric universe fits right into vibrational or sound-based healing modalities and even the long range effect efficacy of it fits into this idea that everything's etherically connected or not even that needs to be connected, that it's all one system infinitely refracted or multiplied. I think it's like that. So we do sound healing sessions, me and clients where we can just balance out problematic energy and energy issues. Like one guy, excuse me, one guy recently, I mean, not one guy, this happens frequently. We all have different places where we're in or out of balance. But for example, you could have just like too much of your life force energy in one shock or bottlenecking and deficient in other areas, you literally off balance. And uh, that's very detectable and very helpful to address with sound etherically. And I mean, I can't fix you of mindset problems that put you into imbalance in the first place. But if we do that, and I end with some cards in the session to help you with the mindset side, to see what it is that needs to be thought of or recognized in order to keep the balance after we've restored it to a degree, you're the one balancing but I'm just showing your body where the imbalance is and putting harmonic tones there so it can be like, oh, this, and it fixes itself. So just to be clear, I'm not like your healer guy, okay? It's a technician thing and it's a communicative communication technician <laughs> helping you have better inner communication web rather than loops. And maybe that makes it a good gig for the side hustle of a podcast host because that's about communication too which is what Mercury is about. Divine messenger, Odin, you could say after all this talk with Ben and I like doing it. I really do. We both get a lot out of it. Me and the individual, it helps me stay tapped in and have a reason to stay in flow state and not fall off throughout the day with doing dumb self-sabotaging things because I know before too long, I got to get in there with somebody and I don't want to bring impurity to the situation. So it's an I win, you win. And I want to do more of it. Please hit me up for that. Or if you want to do a shorter session, that's more of a guidance session. You could call it spiritual guidance. You could call it divination, whatever. We can get together for like half an hour. I will pull cards on your behalf for a question or just to read your energy, whatever you prefer to do. There's a variety of different spreads and things that we could utilize in order to optimize the delivery of that message and make it as obvious as possible in context to a specific question. You've seen maybe my morning videos where I do that for everybody. So yeah, I could do that for you one-on-one. -on -one. And I've been thinking maybe I'm giving too many of those free morning live streams away. Not really from a salesman level, but just maybe the oomph would be better if it was every other day or something. Just because some of those reads, there's a lot to chew on. And maybe a few days chewing on it is better than coming back rapid fire the next morning to more. But I don't know. And I digress because I'm going to pull cards every morning as part of my morning routine rising routine. That sounds better. Alliterative. Wow. I've been talking for a long time in this outro. I don't even know how long I should probably make my way to the wrap up, but I'm just so excited. <laughs> what a fun conversation. Super, super happy to get a better uh, riff session in with Ben Balderson than even the last one, which was awesome. The last time you can check that out. It's from July. Definitely would build on this. If you hadn't heard it yet, get more of his cosmology and more of his personality, both of which are very delicious. And since I've offered my sound healings and divination sessions, I should let you know, you need to email me for that chance at interversepodcast.com. Very soon I will have it listed on my website that you can choose as an option and pay and check out and schedule all in one fell swoop, just like self checkout at the grocery store that we all love so much now. Thanks to cooties. <laughs> I'll get it set up that way. But for now, you got to make human personal contact with me. You could do that over Telegram too. Why aren't you on Telegram? I don't know. You like Zuckerberg stealing your information and censoring you and giving you a parade of trolls and bots more than authentic human connection, I guess. You like profile posturing over <laughs> tribe. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I am making fun of you. Get off of that shit. Join us on Telegram. we got the party room, Interverse is the chat where it's at and there's other awesome channels like the weaving spiders welcome channel full of intense occult esoteric delicious gravy 
the rogue ways chat, our friend, Lindsay, she's got a good one. There are many others, Beth Martins, who I mentioned need to get Balderson on there. I think he just needs a tech expert to do it for him. No offense. He's got other forms of artistry that he's highly proficient at and you can't do it all. So get on there. That's my I'm imploring you to please join telegram. It is super cool. Interverse chat will be linked in the show notes and on the website. And I try to put it everywhere these days. I'm going to play us out with a song. I just Googled or not Googled. God, they're so pervasive. Even just the idea of searching for something, not on Google. I say, I Googled it. Get out of my brain. <laughs> these guys, these Googles, giggles. Uh, Tony Jr. though on SoundCloud came up whenever I searched Odin. I was like, maybe there's a cool song about Odin since we're talking about Odin's alchemy. And I found one. It was Tony Jr. and Ap Apistron, weird other artist name. And that's what I'm going to play us out with. And that's also going to be linked in the show notes. And if you are one of those people that still mostly watches on the RSS feed, it's cool. I understand. Not watches even. You listen, right? I understand. And I try not to make this show inaccessible to audio only. But we're kind of a video format these days and for a while. And it's kind of fun. And I make graphics for every video. So even if you are watching the video and you're planning on piecing out any second and you're still listening to me ramble, there are, are fun graphics I make to put with music at the end of the show. And it's fun for me. I want to share the fun. So check it out if you want. This one I liked. It was uh, a remix animation on the cover of Manly P. Hall's Secret Teachings of All Ages that happens to have a cosmic egg type of world tree set up. So that's the outro song, Odin by Tony Jr. Check out the link for that and all the links to all the things in the show description, episode notes, what have you. And watch out for, oh, last thing to announce. I'm glad I remembered this. Okay. I was on a show called Ascension of the Chessmen. It was really good. If you're listening to this and you didn't see that I reposted that to my RSS feed and listened to that, I hope you maybe do because I had a great time with Andre and he's awesome and he deserves a sub too because he's on the same mission that we are, which is finding the truth and being the love in the world, right? So another one to be connected to, just be aware of at the very least. He's the man. He's going to get better and better just like all of us on this team are. So I recommend subbing that, bro. And also I should be any day now coming up on the uh, False Reality Check podcast. I think there are a few ahead of me and they pre-recorded a bunch because they're getting ready to move, which good on them. Those two are great. Subscribe to them too. Also, Weaving Spiders, welcome. While I'm telling you places to subscribe, subscribe to them too. They just did a mega show, uh, Decoding Dune. And I'm sure that's really interesting to people who like Dune. Like me, my plan to tune in to the replay when I can. They're amazing. So those are my uh, orders. Get on Telegram, join Rockfin. Subscribe to those channels I just said and have a great life and love everybody and everything as much as you can because that's how you expand. All right. I love you and I'll see you guys on the next Vibe Rant on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Just like every week nowadays. Would like to see you live there because it's fun. All right. Catch you later. Ooh.